to Cafe Anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. It is FF episode 2904 2904 and Mike Matthews podcasting. Mike's Daily Podcast. Broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth in the land of Meritopica. People are walking around and they are doing a. F- they're eating vanilla. Uh, ice cream with their apple stuff, their apple crumble. It's really great. It's quite a scene because apples are just everywhere now. Mike's Daily Podcast. They're all over my backyard. Somehow, volunteer apple plants, apple trees grew several years ago. Mike's and now every year, Daily I have all these apples. Podcast. And in the beginning, it was just a couple of little ones. Yeah. Now they're big. Now they're like, wow, okay, they're happy now. So, And what's interesting, in the area that I live in, in Podcaster Valley, there are some areas where people can grow squash really well and pumpkins. Now, the place close by that is the epicenter for amazing pumpkins is Half Moon Bay. In fact, they have a big festival every year coming up soon where they celebrate pumpkins. But pumpkins get so huge. There's a couple of houses down the street from me in this little valley where the pumpkins are ginormous. So ginormous is a word, and it's a truth that I see every day in Podcastro Valley. What other things people are finding is that, well, let's see, you've got Trump who doesn't like, what's his name, Stephan Fluffalopolis? Doesn't like him, doesn't like ABC. Well, he'd be happy about this. ABC, along with ESPN and other channels, they're no longer available on the Direct TV service. That's Direct, and then the T turns into the V, the TV. That's the name of their company, Service. The party's confirmed. Direct TV has about 11 million customers, making it one of the largest pay TV services in the U.S. It's owned by AT&T and TVG Incorporated. And here's today's podcast picture. And they have, they've been holding out for better terms with Disney. The podcast picture, though, is not of AT&T, which came to my house and drilled a big old hole thinking they could get through the wall and they couldn't get through the wall. So they had to go drill through another part of the wall, a different wall, and they were able to get through and bring the fiber optics in. But meanwhile, they left this big old hole in my wall, which I've turned into a paper towel dispenser. <laughs> uh, how did he do that? <coughs> Took a bar and did that. The late great Basil the Boxer would have been quite impressed. And he would have said mul- multiple things like that. But yes, it, 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 they left a mess is what I'm saying. And I have AT&T now, but they left a mess. They just hired the most inept people to come to your house to put in the fiber optics. They don't care. And then they say, oh, just hire a contractor. We'll pay you back. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck with that, finding a contractor. I got to do the work. Why don't you guys come by with somebody that cleans up everything, fixes everything, and I don't have to do anything. Why am I having to suddenly be the worker in this particular situation? The podcast picture is not of any of that, but of a beautiful place that I used to live in. About 16 years ago, I was living in Huntsville, Alabama, and there's this cool park called Big Spring Park. And I was walking around there and took a picture. They are getting some serious heat these days. It's up in the triple digits, and well, I wish them all the best. They had a really hot summer. Hot, and then it gets humid there. This is interesting. Wow, this is interesting. But this is really interesting. So management over there at DirecTV, owned by AT&T, wants a reduction in the minimum number of subscribers it has to pay for. It also wants to offer smaller packages of channels for specific genres, like sports, entertainment, kids programming. The chief content officer at DirecTV said that interview in an interview that Disney wanted the company to waive legal rights to challenge the entertainment giant in court over antitrust issues. Although DirecTV agreed to healthy increases in fees for the company's channels, Disney was still requiring... Oh, Mike, you're <laughs> such a creative soul. All right. Oh, thank you. I, I guess I am. 
But Disney, they're very creative. Of course, they create all kinds of content. They've been a content creator since before any of us were born. But they were still requir- requiring DirecTV to pay for a large share of subscribers, whether or not they watch the programming. Disney agreed to let DirecTV market its sports content in a smaller package. But a proposed entertainment bundle had too many channels to make it a cost-effective offering. So that's happening there if you are using that. I don't know if we could have gone with a package where we would have been using DirecTV, but we don't. We don't have any cable channel Situation going on We just go <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah We're just happy And we laugh like that And we go Directly to Amazon Prime Which I spent about an hour Trying to find So In Netflix Amazon Prime All these streaming services There's this f- This Function That they allow for you That when you see something that you're, When you're browsing And you go Oh I'm gonna watch that later There's like a watch later list And I could not Find I've been saving all this stuff on Amazon Prime. I could not find where it was. I did a search for my stuff because I thought it was called my stuff. That's what it looks like when you click the little check. Eventually, I had to do a search in the Amazon bar because I'm looking directly through the website and I typed in watch list and then it showed up. So, watch list is apparently right. Good, I know, right? And it also wanted me to watch the, the Watchmen. That superhero movie The guy that did all the other Justice League and everything He did that way back in the day Yeah I'm so over the superhero stuff But It's still All the time Deadpool Everywhere you go China's remaining great growth engines The remaining growth engines Are showing signs of sputtering The uh, property market continues to be a drag on the economy, highlighting the urgency as we go outside a cafe anyway. Anyway. Where we bring in Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, the last place on earth in the land of Meritopica. Highlighting the urgency of government intervention to keep an increasing unlikely growth target in sight. That from Bloomberg, that last story from Bloomberg as well. Factory activity... Contracted for a fourth straight month in August. The latest sales figures showed a worsening residential slump. One of the nation's biggest developers, called China Vanke Company, underlined the industry's woes. It's pretty interesting. Last week, by reporting a half year loss for the first time in more than two decades, even the private Cakeson. Uh, manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index Keqin I believe is how you say that Which has in, uh, tended to show stronger results Flashed warning signs Albeit while recovering a f- uh, To 50.4 last month After slipping into Contraction in July And the cost of Production materials fell for the first time In five months Ta-da. In China, not Chowda, but China, while manufacturers slashed selling prices to remain competitive. That's what's going on over there, as well as, according to Bloomberg, China's solar manufacturers. Their solar manufacturers have just been through a bloodbath of an earnings season, but there are tentative signs. The massive glut that's plaguing the industry could be starting to ease. Longi Green Energy Technology Company and five other leading solar firms racked up a combined $2 billion of losses in the first half of this year after a frenzy of factory building over the last few years created excess capacity. And the Oscar goes to... Mike, for reading this story about solar power and solar energy in China. So that has driven prices to record lows. Some smaller companies have been forced into restructuring in China while rising trade tensions with US, with the US and Europe may put exports at risk. The financial pain looks to be planting the seeds for a turnaround, although a meaningful rebound is unlikely until next year. They're saying, and speaking of energy, this also from Bloomberg. Hey Bloomberg, you've got a lot of interesting stories today. Oil pushed lower on signs that OPEC Plus will progress with a plan to lift output 
from October. But the revenge is a dish best served cold. You think about that. China is having revenge yet again because the economic headwinds are mounting in China, and that's affecting the oil. Chinese data showed factory activity contracted for a fourth month in August and a residential slump deepened, raising concerns the world's top crude importer may struggle to meet this year's economic growth target. So they are in the news again. Oil has been given up most of its gains this year as expectations of ample supply and signs of economic headwinds, including in the U.S., weighed on prices. Even though, even so, I am still spending a lot of gas, even though all that is going on. A lot of money on gas in the Bay Area. It is not coming. All right, all right, all right. And no matter what Matthew McConaughey does, there's no way gas prices seem to be going down at all. The one gas station I go to in Union City that seems to have the cheap gas, that keeps going up and up. Donald Trump, I'm sure, is going to talk about this at some point and say, I, if you elect me, I will bring gas prices down. It wasn't Biden. He tried to bring gas prices down by tapping into the oil reserves. And then people on the far right complained, saying, hey, you're, you're, uh, you can't do that because we need that for an emergency emergency. And it's like that line from Sure Thing with John Cusack. Well... She goes, I Mike, you want to join in on this conversation? You can join in. You, you know, oh. you can. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, what we were talking was the conversation about Sure Thing with John Cusack. Because the, the gal in there in that movie that he's driving with, she, they, they run into an emergency and she has a credit card and she says, I'm only supposed to use this in an emergency. And he says, well, I think this would qualify as an emergency. Well, maybe that did qualify it as an emergency when we were having the gas prices going through the roof. When gas prices were like over $7 in Los Angeles. But along with those campaign promises, there was this one that Donald Trump did that set off Senator Lindsey Graham and he talked about Mima, and he said he poured, he poured cold water on Trump's new campaign promise that would require either the government or insurance companies to cover the cost. Live and loco. This is Live and Loco. To cover the cost of in vitro treatments, IVF. Lindsey Graham is the South Carolina Republican. And IVF, a fertility treatment in which eggs are taken from the ovaries and fertilized by sperm in the lab before returning the fertilized eggs or embryos to the uterus, has become a contentious issue in this year's presidential election. Since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, In June of 2022, Democrats have taken aim at Republicans arguing that the GOP-led abortion restrictions could lead to limitations on IVF as well. This from Newsweek.com. In an effort to show his support for fertility treatments, Trump then announced a new campaign promise on IVF. Ridiculous random. In his ridiculous random posts Of things that he is posting And all politicians are posting now In this election year Their ridiculous random posts to try and get elected He had made a campaign promise On IVF during an event in Michigan On Thursday Showing his support for fertility treatments I'm announcing today in a major statement That under the Trump administration Your government will pay for Or your insurance company Will be mandated to pay for All costs associated with IVF treatment Because we want more babies To put it nicely (laughs) He doesn't mince words He's the If you you need to go see Idiocracy And you will understand Why we are here With uh, Is it Owen Wilson? This is why we are here It's because people We can't say Fuddruckers correctly anymore And we're saying it the bad way that's where we are in society. So he's, he's got to speak the language plain. This isn't the 1980s and your dial-up modem. He's got, to, he's got to speak directly through the airwaves digitally. The sound is so annoying. So 
When pressed on whether the government or insurance companies would be responsible for covering IVF services, the former president reiterated that one option would involve mandating insurance companies to pay. We're going to be mandating because it's got the, my name, my, my gender in there in that title, mandating that insurance companies pay, he mansplained. However, in an appearance on Sunday on ABC's This Week, when asked by host Jonathan Carl if Lindsey Graham, a Trump ally, he's, he so doesn't want to be an ally. He disagrees with him a lot, but doesn't say it. Uh, if Graham wouldn't support mandating insurance companies to cover the cost of but IVF. If you get offended, that's the way the cookie crumbles. No. <laughs> the senator said that he would, but added... He instead believes in a tax credit for children. Ah, that's how he gets away with it. No, no, no. I would because there's no end to that. I think a tax credit for children makes sense means tested. Let's look at that concept for people trying to have a child. That makes some sense to me. I would talk to Democratic colleagues who we might be able to find common ground here. So, anyway. Oh, Tom Cotton. Now, he's an Arkansas Republican, and he is... Hard, hard right. He's not far right. He's hard right. And he pointed towards a different view, stating in a Sunday interview with NBC's uh, Meet the Press that most Republicans would be open to Trump's proposed IVF plan after evaluating fiscal impact. Wow. This would never, ever happen unless it was for Trump. They, most of the time, this would never come up. But they're like, all right, whatever he says. Daily podcast master pod feeder. Here are the podcast players in an interpretation of what is happening in the Republican Party. Uh, Trump says we should all wear coonskin hats and sing songs from the early Disney movies. All right, whatever he says, I say uh, my favorite Disney movie I love to sing from is Jungle Book because I'm the king of the jungle, the jungle VIP. That's what Meemaw says. End scene. All right. Was that the most fantastic performance you ever heard? No. What? No. Oh. That's sad. Okay, well, Cotton said that all Republicans, to my knowledge, support IVF in Congress, and there's no state that prohibits or regulates IVF in a way that makes it inaccessible. It is expensive for many couples. I understand that, so it's something I'm open to that most Republicans would be open to, and there you go. Suddenly, the issue that many Republicans were against for a long time has become an issue that they're for because they want to be in power again. And that's what's happening this year. And if you shoot me, you better shoot straight. There's nothing like a wounded animal. No, no, no. No shooting politicians. Yes, they're annoying, but none of that. It's no bueno. Look who's here. Hello, my gosh. It's Madame Rudebega. All these are very interesting. I like cotton shirts. Ooh. Oh, yeah, we just mentioned Cotton, Tom Cotton from Arkansas. There are some beautiful places in that fine state that I would like to go visit at some point. Do you like Arkansas? Yes. Do you like California? Yes. Do you like Oz? No. Yes. Oz is bad. It's got that Emerald City and weird things like the people made out of tin. Just so flying monkeys what and other fun things okay well that's the end of the show i think we should end it there oh unless we want to say hi to these guys hello dear mike this is valentino the parenting attendant and this is bison bentley do you know what I wow are you okay mike's absolutely useless review my my review my review of Superhero movies, I don't like them. I think I said that earlier. My review, my review of campaign promises, I don't trust the uh, politicians. Did you hear uh, the problem with political jokes is because they get elected? That's my review. Um, are you okay, Bison? Yeah, I'm okay. Do you know Mike, we was just talking here because people hear my name, and when they go and they pack their cans in the parking lot. And I'm the packing lot attendant. They see me and they go, "Hey, you're Valentino. Are you a f- are you a famous clothing designer, D?" And I say, "No, I'm not, D. 
I'm a parking attendant, B. Yeah, he's a parking attendant. That's right. That's why he says his name on the show that he is a parking attendant in tandem with it. And that's why we have to wrap up the show. If you'd like to call in and comment on anything, here is the, what do you call it? It's a phone number. Mike rip someone a new one. Oh, yeah. Uh, AT&T, why don't you come to my house and fix all these holes that you put in the holes there in the house? You call Mike at the Cafe Anyway hotline. Area code 510-228-4640. Will you shut up? Liberty Nation Freedom Foam for All. Oh, will you shut up? It's a crime and tragedy that cable companies are coming to people's houses and putting holes in the wall. And will you shut up? Fair and unbalanced. I think that's pretty much what we can label this podcast today is fair and unbalanced. But I hope you got a lot out of it. We covered some interesting news there. Thank you to the Bloomberg peoples. And thank you to listen to you for listening. And if you would like to find out all things Mike's Daily Podcast, join me as we go to the mainframe and hear from A Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.